to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Does God really move? Is it possible that God is able to turn a man's situation around? The Bible says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. I love verse 12. I've read this scripture many times, but the Lord gave me a powerful revelation. He said to the end that my glory will sing praise to thee and not be silent O Lord my God I will give thanks to thee forever he said listen I have been thanking you but I want my results to also join you he says to the end that my glory not just me my glory I long for my glory to also sing praises to you you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow or you have taken away sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Other versions will say you have turned my sorrow into joy. Listen, I want you to know and to believe that miracles do happen. I want you to believe that God is able to intervene over the lives of people I want you to believe please listen carefully I'm staring your faith now I want you to believe that signs and wonders are real I want you to believe that new levels in the spirit and in destiny is possible I want you to believe that God is able to make something that was not in your hand today to be in your hand the next moment it is within the power of God and I want you to believe that God is able to take something you did not want that the devil is forcing in your hand to live your life I want you to believe that the power of God can transport things from the realm where they are hidden to the realm where they manifest in your life you have to believe this the life that we have been called into is a supernatural life you must believe that God is able to save. Look at the testimony of that dear lady. Salvation, everyone, someone who had been plagued with drugs, smoking and doing all of this. And she not only had an encounter, that encounter spilled over to all her loved ones. That is the power of God. I have seen the power of God in my life. I would be a liar if I told you that I've not seen certain dimensions of God. I have seen God's strange visitations. I have seen the power of God in this ministry. What God is doing today is a testament of his power. My assignment tonight 
is to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit to the end that the power of God be made manifest in your life in a way that is unmistakable. There are things that happen and you can doubt. Maybe it was God, maybe it was this. But there are things that happen. You stand and you know that this one, it was only God. Hallelujah. But I want you to believe. Do you know, most believers, the only reason why they clap over the manifestation of miracles is just that the testifiers are before them. But if they were left to the question, can God do this? They may just laugh. Part of the advantages of being spiritual is that your faith becomes so built that you can believe God for anything. Listen, this is my Bible. You see, when the Bible speaks as a parable, it will tell you it was a parable. Are we together? When the Bible speaks as something that actually happened to men, to cities, the Bible will state it very clearly. Read the Bible and see the awe-inspiring, fearful things that were done by the power of God. They were not parables. By this time tomorrow, it was not a parable. The Red Sea parting. Forget all the arguments that, you know, all of these arguments that people bring around. Let God be true and every man a liar. How about a 25-year-old barrenness situation in the Bible? that was turned around overnight. How about resurrection? How about all kinds of miracles? Impotent folks, folks that were, were left for dead. How about demonic oppressions? One of the women that worked in the welfare department of Jesus' ministry, he had to cast seven demons out of her. How about Lazarus? How about the fig tree that would take from the earth and yet not bring fruit? He cursed it physically and by the next day it had withered. How about ravens that brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith? How about five loaves and two fish that fed 5,000 people? Sometimes it's not just a new job you need. You need a miracle of favor. As simple as that. Hallelujah. How about Elijah running on barefoot and overtaking the chariots of Ahab down to Israel? Except you are not a Christian. How about people mocking God, keeping the ark of God close to Dagon and locking the door? They left the altars alone and by the next day, Dagon fell forward to the ground. What altar cannot fall? There was no man of God who was preaching and praying and saying Dagon fall. They just left two of them. How about angels that threw hailstones and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight? How about Saul who encountered Samuel the prophet and returned back meeting all kinds of miracles waiting for him? Do you not believe the Bible? There is nothing in your life today by the authority of scripture I tell you this. There is no situation here represented, no matter how complicated, that is worth making God scratch his head and saying, we've never seen this kind. We're talking about the God of the Bible. Is it your bills? Is it a medical condition? You've heard of God healing people here. Listen, I'm not inhuman. I understand that in the presence of painful situations, whether medical, whether financial, the truth is that these things can convey a level of pain that you can feel. If you are told you have cancer, or if you are told you have um, some kind of sickness, the pain is there, the growth is there, the lump is there. You, come, you came with someone who is mad, the madness is there. The person is misbehaving, you are seeing the person. If it's a demonic pattern over a family where nobody rises, you can clearly see it. But the Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, 
but the things that are unseen unseen does not mean unreal you can look at invisible things right now while you are seated you can look at the healed you or you can continue looking at the sick you you can look at the you with an employment with dignity and honor or you can look at the you that is supposedly miserable and helpless the bible leaves us with the liberty to be able to look at the things seen and the things unseen it takes the eyes of faith to see through the lens of scripture that i may be sitting right now as a tenant or not even knowing where my rent will come from but I know, I know, I know that there is a God in heaven who can turn things around. I may be sitting holding a medical report right now. Look at the lady. Three months, they said. After three months, you are gone. And it's been only God knows how long. I believe in Jesus. I believe in his power. I believe that he heals. I believe that he prospers. I believe that he delivers. I do. I believe that he's able to give speed. I believe that he's able to restore. Please look up. I believe he's able to bring laughter. I believe that God is able to save whole families within a moment. I truly believe it. I would be wasting your time here if I didn't believe it. I believe it. Onisha, Iyanu, you're the God of awesome wonders, tasted of your power. Onisha, you have shown me so much mercy. Listen, I am a student of the miraculous and I'm a student of the power of God. By the privilege of God's grace and with every sense of humility, I live my life learning Jesus, learning his ways, and that includes learning the supernatural. And any material I can find that can help guide my understanding to understand the realm of the spirit better and the operation of God's power, I would plunge and throw myself into it. I can tell you this. Please look up. In my life and from my study of scripture and even observing people who have worked marvelously in the power of God, there has always been two major ingredients as far as the administration of the power of God is concerned. Please listen carefully. Number one, you have to believe that God is able. As simple as it sounds, you can remain forever and never see the outstretched arm of God if you do not believe. The Bible demands faith for the supernatural to be released. The Bible demands faith. Let me add responsible faith. There is irresponsible faith. The faith that allows God and says, God, you have to do everything. But there is responsible Bible faith. Father, you have said this. I have found it. So there's no need asking, is it your will? I have found it in your word. If you find it in his word and by the witness of the spirit, it is unwise to be asking if it is his will. It's unwise to ask whether it's his will for you to be blessed. It's unwise to ask whether it's his will for you to have peace. It's unwise to ask whether it's his will for you to be healed. It is unwise and even unscriptural to ask whether it is his will for you to live long. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Jeremiah 29, 11 said the Lord, they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Are we together? The word of God is the basis of God's commitment to the believer. I have taught you this. And it matters that you find it please look up many believers cannot tell you why they think God will meet their needs if I ask the average believer now what is the basis of your confidence as to the fact that God is going to change this medical report as wonderful as it is to say oh 
Joshua Selman is around. I know he's a powerful man of God. You are not wrong, but that is not the scriptural basis. Have you found it? He opened the book and he found where it was written concerning him. Hallelujah. If you stand to fight poverty, the devil has a right through that spirit to say, I will not leave. He has a right to ask you, by on what basis should I leave this family? I am tired. It's not a wise answer. I hate poverty. It's not a wise answer. The word of God says, ah, I love the word of God. Now, when you bring what the word of God says, it, it brings an end to the discussion. Are we together now? Yes. Let them sing for joy. They that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. End of discussion. Okay? Is this why I should leave this family? I have lived here for 150 years, turning every great person into a pauper. Now you can say my case must be different. And the basis is that this is what is written. I have found it. Now the ministry of the Holy Spirit is at work because the word of God has been revealed. I am tired. I think I don't like this. This is unfair. Life is not treating me right. Those things are emotionally consoling. But in the realm of the spirit, they weigh, up, they weigh absolutely nothing. The realm of the spirit does not respond to pain or tears or emotions or sympathy. Please listen carefully. The realm of the spirit does not respond to tears or pain or sympathy or emotions. It responds to the word of God. The word of God is the basis for action. I am the Lord that he led thee. Therefore, this growth, what are you looking for in my body? In the name of Jesus, you must go. You must leave. Are we together? Yes. Why do you believe that you will not be mediocre? That you will rise and God will honor you? Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all the nations of the earth listen this scripture will never come to pass in your life if you do not find it and believe it next verse verse 2 and all these blessings, the blessings are not few. All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord. I may not come from a family with any advantage, you will say, but in the name of Jesus, I believe that I am blessed. I believe that I am blessed. This is not a Pentecostal charismatic jumping up and down. This is a, a scriptural protocol to commanding the attention of God. You are too big to agree with God. You will never receive anything from heaven. I believe God. I believe God. In the name of Jesus, a thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, none shall hurt me. With thy eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Are we together now? That kings shall entreat my favor. I believe it. What does it mean to believe? To believe does not mean to merely agree. Uh -uh. To agree with God and meditate upon his promise until you find the participatory role that you have to play. Until you find your part in that faith equation, you are not believing properly. Most people will tell you, I am believing God. I am believing God to prosper me. And you tell them, okay, so what is the basis of your believing God? The word of God says, I will prosper. Wonderful. What else? That's it. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Respectfully, that will not work that way. No. God said it. You believe it. You find out what he said you should do to activate what he has said and then you obtain grace to do it consistently.
that is what settles it so if for instance I tell someone in the name of Jesus be healed and you are having maybe headache or whatever it is or a growth and I say do what you couldn't do before as an act of faith and you say listen I know this I'm already feeling the pain the pain it is is partial paralysis or stroke or something wrong with my back believe me even if it were Jesus Christ who stands here and is done with his preaching you will be surprised that we will share the grace and you will live and nothing will change just because the power of God is present does not mean it will heal you the power of God is present to heal those who believe that God is able to heal them hallelujah is someone learning Apostle, my own is that I need a prophetic declaration over my life. I feel like there's a closed heaven over me. Now when the word of God comes, in the name of Jesus, may your heavens be opened. You casually say amen and then you just laugh at yourself. And the devil says, thank God you know that nothing will happen. And you guess right, absolutely nothing will happen. Even if you fall under the anointing, you will be surprised that you will stand up and nothing will change. Falling under the anointing is not the condition for reception. Believing the word of God is. Those things are just effects of spiritual activities happening to you. Every one person who stands here to testify had to do the job of believing at a point. Lord, I believe you. You will hear them say this. Some of them had dreams. Some of them had visions. But they had to take responsibility to say, I believe. Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But Thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Hear me. The day you actually believe that you will never be down in life, that is the day you leave the ground forever. The day you really believe it, that it becomes spirit and life. The day you believe that it's not in your prophetic destiny to be poor. I'm not talking of this canal I will be rich with a heart that does not love God. I'm talking about a heart that knows the role of poverty in destroying God's purposes and the role of prosperity in advancing the purposes of God. There is something about conviction. Look on us. And he looked, expecting to receive something. In other words, if Peter and John dare walked away without a miracle, that man would have responded to them and said, I am lying down crippled, but two of you are false prophets because I believe you. The Bible says he looked at them expecting to receive. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. He said, uh-huh, I'm still listening. What do you have? And then he says, such as I have. You know, Peter's humility was very clear. He admitted that there were some things he did not have. Are we together? But he also acknowledged that there were some things that he had. I submit to you by the grace of God. We may not claim to have everything. But there are some things we have as far as addressing your situation is tonight there are some things by the grace of God that can put an end to that shame and reproach yeah. hallelujah when you read that scripture the Bible says he said in the name of Jesus rise up and walk I know the Bible is written in summary so you would think that in chapter 3 and verse 6 he just jumped up no he remained there in the name of Jesus rise up and walk Peter was surprised John was surprised the man was surprised there was no miracle yet the power of God was still there yet the Word of God was there the same way it has happened since March by God's de design you were not supposed to be writing that prayer request again but there is something you did not do in March there's something you did not do in April there's something you did not do in May. I pray you do it this night. Yeah. Are we together? 
and the Bible says, give us verse 7, that he took him by the hand and lifted him up and immediately, when did his feet receive? What part of his body received? <laughs> that means every part of your body is a receiver depending on your action. It was not just his hand that received. His ankle bones received. Your head can receive. Your heart can receive. Are we together now? He lifted him. You would think the Bible says, and his hand. No. The power of God made contact or the, the, the apostle's hand made contact with his hand. But the miracle was not needed at the hand. His ankle bones received. His finances received. The situation, that means I can speak over your life. It does not matter through what entrance the power of God gets to you. The most important thing is that it must go to the area that needs to receive strength, receive life. I can declare over your life in the name of Jesus, be blessed. And for someone, that word will go straight to your finances because that is the area that needs strength. For someone, that area, it will go and scatter an altar somewhere that will not let people rise. His ankle bones receive strength. And the Bible says, he leaping stood. Please give it to us. He leaping stood up. The man made efforts. The Bible does not tell us whether he still felt pain as at the time he was standing. But it's safe to assume that he still felt pain. But the Bible says the man leaped and stood. And immediately he walked. The dynamics of Bible faith. It will always take faith to activate the supernatural. The supernatural does not just work because God is able and God is powerful. You need faith. Hallelujah. For someone on hearing a prophetic word about increase, the Spirit of God will speak to you. Go and register a company by tomorrow. You may not have enough money for business, but go and look for a lawyer. Register a company by faith. When we say lay your hands, it's not a ritual. You lay your hands there. I'm feeling this pain, but in the name of Jesus, you are about to leave. This breast lump, you are a devil, you must leave. Ignore the pain and believe in Jesus. You are looking at the things that are unseen. And the power of God will come through the channel of your faith. And all of a sudden you will hear testimonies. Testimonies. Just like a dream. He said, you have turned my morning to dancing. This is the dynamics. Faith. Faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. You must believe. You must believe. And you must act. Pay attention to instructions when the anointing of the Spirit is in a place because your miracle can be one instruction away. Shout Jesus. You just feel, ah, what is it about Jesus? I said it this morning. Under what kind of influence? Are we together? Imagine if Joshua told them, shout over Jericho, Tehillah, that sound. And they said, listen, we are not stupid people. Do you know what it means to go around seven times? Jericho was not like a small shop that you would go around. Going around in the hot sun seven times. And he said, with every energy you have, shout. Let me tell you the truth. You would be lying to imagine those people did not imagine themselves being stupid. If at the fourth or fifth time the fence started cracking, that will help your, your faith. Because you say, wow, the gate. Is opening. Uh, let's shout. Anybody will be motivated. Spiritual things look dead even to the last second. Now man, go and bath seven times. Number four, he came out. I could imagine Naman looking at the slave girl with anger. I will kill Elisha if after seven times I actually come out of this water. You know what it means to be leprous and yet imagine a very dirty river. Number five, he came out, nothing. Number six, he came out, nothing. 
and then he went at the seventh time the power that had always been there rested upon him as soon as he came out the bible says his skin was like that of a baby are we together how about elijah and the prophets of bell elijah said call upon bell and they called from morning till the time of the evening sacrifice and then elijah put the altar elijah put the altar together and then he called upon the lord you thought that he would not doubt in his heart you are joking he was human god please show up and you thought you would hear a sound and then all of a sudden like it will happen to you now in the name of jesus christ seconds does it take a text to enter your phone that is how fast it takes the power of God to get to your life science has shown us how fast the power of God can be that I can send a text now and in a fraction of a second someone's phone will be beeping in the US in Europe if 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 technology can capture the realm of the spirit and make it so scientific can you imagine that I can send you a text and after 10 seconds if you've not received it I become impatient because it's not supposed to be that long how much more the power of God see some of you have waited too long you, you have not been angry enough that's why believe what I'm telling you you send an SMS to someone and after 10 seconds, it's not gone. You send it again. You send it again. After one minute, five minutes, as short as five minutes, you've lost patience because the accuracy should not allow for that kind of thing. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Listen, I have taught you and I understand there is the law of process where God leads you gradually, sequentially into your destiny. But there are many things that are demonic and there are many situations that have not manifested because of the irresponsibility of the saints. You are not yet tired of that situation to place a demand. I want you to use this text example right now and say, Lord, a human being, not even born again, sent an SMS with a phone that was made scientifically and in a moment it got to me. What makes you believe God cannot reach you? When they called you this morning, did your phone not ring? Out of them, were you, were you the only one being called? Many people were called, but your line, it was distinct to you. There may be thousands of people here and following all over the world, but I want you to assume you are the only one in this place. That is the spirit of faith. It's not being selfish. Lord, I thank God for my brothers and sisters, but I came here for you. Give me an encounter. Your favor is real. Let it speak over my life. I'm tired of this level. The devil will give you excuses. Who knows you? The devil will give you excuses. Are you not holding a medical report? The doctor who treated you, is he not a Christian? I want you to stand by faith and believe. You have to make up your mind. I'm tired of this situation. It must let me go in the name of Jesus. Tired of tears, tired of shame, tired of reproach. Hallelujah. Now listen. So I told you there are two keys to experiencing the power of God number one is your faith number two listen carefully number two is the anointing of the Holy Spirit 
there are many times people do not receive frankly speaking not because they do not have faith but the vessel that God is using has not built capacity in the spirit through death to the flesh through the sacrifice of consecration through impartation through intelligence to rise to a level of the anointing that can solve the problems of the people it's true listen there are different tanks tanks t-a-n-k-s tanks that we put water we have different calibrations to them they are small tanks medium giant tanks if you have a small tank it can only serve a few people so the problem is not the the tap the problem is that the tank that is connected to the tap are we together can only give its limit is that true so there are times the problem is not the tap the tap is ever ready to be opened but the major problem is the tank the capacity of the vessel is small not the capacity of God remember I taught you that spiritual resources flow from God through man through a vessel that is the reason why God continues to work on us vessels so that our capacity is enlarged so that if there is anything that your level of spiritual development could not capture from heaven to release to God's people by the next time you show up you would have grown an expanded capacity it means that there are many men of God and many spiritual leaders that God will judge them because God will say someone's healing this person kept believing but the problem was not the person's lack of faith the problem is you as the man of God refused to grow in a greater level of the healing anointing so that you are able to solve the problem I have told you that the anointing works like money if you have a hundred dollars a hundred dollars is about 69 70 thousand and you have 70 thousand naira if someone is hungry you don't need to be afraid because for a, 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 a regular you'll be able to buy something within that amount but if what the person needs is a vehicle you will need maybe five million plus and the rest to get the car now you have money but your money is too small relative to the need of the person are we together now yes let me illustrate something and I begin to pray let me have who can I have come my friend any gentleman the gentleman on black don't worry you sit come let me use him watch this watch this now let's assume this my dear one here came with all kinds of issues financial issues please look up headache for instance are we together family problems yokes curses he came to koinonia for miracle service expecting to receive now this guy is full of faith he's believed God and he's believed God's servant so he's done his own part are we together now every problem in this man's life has a dimension of the anointing that solves it just like money are we together now so let me just use money for an example I hope you will not be confused let's assume that just for example it takes 1,000 naira worth do you understand what I'm teaching you now 1,000 naira worth of anointing just for want of expression and it takes 5,000 naira worth to heal his hand are we together to deal with the causes and the yokes the administration of it now may take maybe 1 million naira worth and to speak favor in his life may require 1 billion naira worth watch this if my worth in terms of anointing is 500,000 and if I pray for this guy it is only the condition that is below the level of anointing I carry that will be solved so I can pray for him be healed cause his leave financial doors be open favor come he can't get favor it takes one billion now I've spoken what is above my level of grace the Bible says minister according to the measure of grace that means you have to know what you carry and what it can do before you speak so I prayed over five things in the man's life he will return with a testimony the headache was healed 
What about the financial situation? Nothing really happened. How about favor? Well, we're still believing God. Who failed here? The vessel. I will be too proud to admit it usually. Just give a flimsy excuse. It's not God. Let God be true and every man a liar. Now watch this. If I go and stay in the place of prayer, in the place of the word, and through impartation, I now grow from 500,000 and by next miracle service, I return with 50 million. You see that? Worth of anointing or dimension of the anointing. Because of that size of the anointing, there are things I will not even pray for. You see that? Immediately, they are too low relative to what you carry. It will leave, believe me. Now, many things will change in his life except that favor dimension because favor will require that one billion dimension. I will go back again. Otherwise, what is the value of growing in grace? I now grow in grace. Learn from those who have gone ahead. Receive impartation. Stay with God. And then I rise to a point where I am five billion worth of anointing. Now, let me show you how I will, I will be a blessing. Let's assume this guy were meeting me for the first time. And all his problems are less than one million. In a moment, in the name of Jesus, that will be it. So a man like Baba Deboe can stand and say in the name of Jesus. You now see what is happening. Nothing much. But the problem is not just the speaking. It's the size of the grace that is addressing the issues. <laughs> Apostle, what are you saying? Is this scriptural? Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus. Why would Jesus need to be anointed? How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, he went about on the strength of that lavish anointing. There were some things that the disciples could not do at some point in their lives. But then eventually when they encountered power, listen, did you see the progression even of Peter's life? When Peter got filled with the Holy Ghost, his shadow could not heal. He was standing near the guy at gate, beautiful. He had not gotten to that size of the anointing. So he had to prime his faith and hold his hand. But Peter got to a point where people lined up. He did not speak, it was his shadows. If it is true that we are growing in the spirit, that means a testimony that did not happen to you last month should be able to happen to you this month. It's true. That is why it is unfair and dangerous for a man of God to remain at the same spiritual level whereas activities just keep happening because you will be wasting the time of God's people and sooner or later they will discern that you have reached your limit spiritually they will respect you but they will leave you and go and look for what works members and human beings are not stupid they God has put this spiritual instinct in them they can gauge the size and the level of what anointing is confronting their situation. And when they know that this situation that is plaguing this family is 10 billion naira worth of the anointing, you come with 250,000, they will respect you just so that you will not um, feel bad. But they will quietly go and look for solutions. There were certain things I would never have seen in my life years ago. Because the level of grace that comes through knowledge, through impartation, through understanding, through encounters was not there to that degree. But thank God growth is a possibility in the kingdom. The version of you that started this year should not be the version of you that came. It will be evil of you if the, or evil of me if the level of anointing I came with last miracle service is still the same level of anointing I'm coming with now. What then was the need for putting a new one? But thank God that grace can be multiplied. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. How God empowered Koinonia. How God anointed Joshua Selman with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about 
doing good and healing all you see when we know this are uh, it will grant us the humility to keep growing regardless the results we see this is one of the most uncomfortable messages you will hear as a man of God because it puts a lot of the responsibility over people's lifting on you because most people believe that they left their home to come is enough faith that they defied the rain and stayed from morning there are people who were here as early as 7 10 12 what demonstration of faith is greater than that let me assure you tonight that you will not be disappointed. I'm taking out time to charge your heart because I want us to take all the limitations away so that we will allow the power of God to step in. You may be like this gentleman. You came with several prayer requests. You came with several needs. Please have no fear. God is alive. And he will visit you at the point of your need. Let me talk about something one more minute. How do you know God has visited you? Number one. By faith in the integrity of his word. And then number two. By a performance. Blessed is she that believes. For unto her. So it does not just stop at believing. How do I know God has visited me? Number one, I believe based on the integrity of his word. But number two, I believe because there will be a performance. A manifestation. How do I know God has healed me? Number one, because I know that he heals. But number two, because I know the pain has gone. Not just by faith as we call it. Gone, like it's gone. How do I know the grace for favor has come upon me? Number one, I believe it because the word of God says it. But number two, my phone begins to be full of mysterious calls from people. Where are you? There has to be a physical performance. Hallelujah. How do I know that the barrenness situation has gone? Number one, because of the integrity of the word of God. But number two, my stomach will start protruding. Is that true? You're a woman and your stomach will protrude and they will tell you it's a child here. Yeah, not that it's a growth. And after nine months you give birth. Now you know the word of God has come. How do I know God has visited my finances? One because the word of God says so number two because supernatural wisdom and favor comes upon me the anointing will make me start thinking in a certain way the anointing will manage my belief systems to start thinking consistent with the way of one who produces wealth and then programming a climate of favor around my life how do I know speed has arrived in my life because the word of God says so but number two, be between now and the end of September, I will see God do things that he did not do in the last five, six years together. Yeah. Do you believe what you are hearing? Yeah. How do I know my prayer requests have been answered? It's not just because Joshua Selma knelt down and spoke over it. No, the word of God says so, one. But number two, I keep a copy of what I submitted here and watch the faithfulness of God Lord I agreed for a job and by Monday someone calls you and said I'm sorry I would have given you since July I forgot now you know the book of remembrance has been opened you now take it the Lord spoke to me to pay your rent for three years before you get established now you know favor has arrived How do you know that a new anointing has come upon your life? Number one, the word of God says so. But number two, you will begin to see results. Results that were not in your frame of reference before now. As a man of God, you begin to see results. Supernatural manifestations of the power of God. Dra 
are magic things that only God can do through men. Koinonia, I pray for you. May this be your portion this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Commanding results in the kingdom is not rocket science. The grace of God has demystified these things so that the saints will understand. Hear me. God is glorified when we rise. Give us some 30 again. Now you will understand. It says that my glory will praise you. I can praise you even without results. But I need my glory to praise you. Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and guarded me with gladness. Verse 12. It says, give us verse 12 please. To the end that my glory. That means as you are worshipping, your car outside is also worshipping. As you are worshipping, the baby is also worshipping. Your results should also worship God. This is why we are here tonight. And if you are coming here for the first time, you are welcome. You will know that you came to a place where God dwells. Because my God will surprise you this night. So what is God doing tonight? One, he's healing. Two, he's bringing deliverance. Three, he's bringing breakthroughs. Number four, he's bringing restorations. Do you believe this? Number five, I believe he's opening the book of remembrance. Listen, God never forgets, but men can forget. And it is equally dangerous when men forget you. Hallelujah. The Bible says the keeper of Israel, he neither sleeps nor slumber. Look at the gentleman who gave his testimony. I hope when you listen to these testimonies, you are learning from them. Now the man told him, I have signed the contract. And yet the man forgot. The same way somebody thought that it was you he blessed and forgot. He must remember this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere your portion is hiding, in this city and in this nation, in the name of Jesus, if you believe it, I declare over you, by the God who called me, he must look for you in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I believe this, oh, I believe this. Let the atmosphere of faith help that lady under the anointing. Please participate in everything we are doing tonight. Don't waste your time. You came here since morning. Don't just watch others and clap. When we are saying shout Jesus, when, when the power of God is moving, touching people, don't just be passive and you are watching and saying, wow, it was a powerful service. That's not what you came to do. This is not a cinema. This is not a museum. You came because there are some things that must give way. You came because your ministry, the mockery and the shame around your ministry, as though God did not call you. You came to encounter grace that will rewrite the narrative of your ministry. So if you're a man of God, a woman of God, don't sit down and see if the anointing is not available for you to receive. If ye been evil, know how to give good gifts. God is a giver. Did you hear that? God is a giver. Let me give you one prayer point. Father, my portion in life and destiny, my prophetic portion, I receive it in the name of Jesus. It must gravitate towards my life. Please open your mouth and pray. That portion of grace allocated for my efficiency. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. God is able to make all grace abound towards you.
let me add one more prayer point father let me enter my season of results that my hand will hold something a season of results please open your mouth and pray my season of results let my life capture your faithfulness everywhere pray you are following online pray a season of the performance tired of being at the same level Give me a testimony give me a testimony give me a testimony i need a consolation to my christian experience in the name of jesus put a new song in my mouth a pray a song of praise to our god that many will see and fear and put their trust in you let my life carry the evidence of being a child of god let my life carry the evidence of being a favored one let my life carry the evidence of carrying the mantles and the graces that you have given me Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We do not serve God just because of results. We love him more than that. However, however, there are many people whose knowing God depends on your results. Are we together? When Peter stood before the Jerusalem council in defense of the miracle that happened, the Bible says the man who was healed was standing with him. It is one thing to declare Jesus based on the authority of scripture, but it's one thing to declare Jesus in the presence of your evidence. You are a true witness when your evidence is there. You can tell people God lifts and they will believe. But when you are lifted and you say God lifts, it will be stupid to doubt you. This is what I'm praying. Because see, many of you, your promoting the purposes of God is not efficient. Because the evidence that you need as a man of God, you can't keep telling people God opens doors. They keep shouting amen indefinitely. They are human. They will be tired. Do you mind praying this prayer one more time? Father, in the name of Jesus, let my life command an evidence. The proof of your faithfulness seen in my life. The proof of victory seen in my life. The proof of favor seen in my life. The proof of intimacy with the Holy Spirit seen in my life. in my life sin in my life give me a change of story in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we're going into the ministry of the Spirit right now where God is going to be visiting us. I want you to believe. When it's time to pray for the sick, I want you to open up your heart. You came with a sick person. When it's time to receive that miracle, 
I want you to receive with all your heart. And when we instruct you to check yourself and you find out the power of God has touched you, you make your way very quickly here and we'll be ministering deliverance. Listen, the word of God is the conveyor of his power. So for every word that comes like never before, receive it with understanding and intention. I know what God has shown me about the kind of people he's raising. I know what God has told me as we pray preparing for this. Many of you have traveled from across literally nations across the globe, several regions within this nation. God will not gather you like this to waste your time. Hallelujah. And as I begin to minister in the spirit, don't worry, just allow me to do my crazy things here. I'm walking with the spirit. The way God walks, by now you know, it does not make sense. But provided is consistent with his character and it produces results. Sometimes the ways of the spirit is like the way of the wind. You cannot tell where it cometh and where it goeth. But one thing you cannot deny is the signature of God's power upon it. There are prophetic actions that will come. Sometimes they may not make sense. Be flexible and be childlike enough to believe the Lord. Hallelujah. This is koinonia. Please stand, just remain silent. I'm not making an altar call. It is the power of God that is going to be moving. And please ushers, now let me just say this, whether you are an usher or not, our ushers are limited, there are thousands of people here and all across. Um, anyone who is under the anointing close to you, if I ask you to bring them, please just bring them out so that we'll hurry up. It is my prayer that everybody will receive maximally within the limited time that we have. I don't intend to keep us too long, but I want that God will grant us grace to do so much. Hallelujah. When God speaks like this, it is because there is something that he's doing. Hallelujah. Are we together? So after the first shout, there will be a shout of a lady. And then after that, the power of God will start moving to specific people. And what I am seeing in the spirit, I'm just seeing like a cloud about to rain. And that's what God is doing to these families that he's single-handedly bringing out. Bring them out now. Please bring them out. My restorer has won my battle for me. My lifter has won my battle for me. The God of lifting has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man, a winner man. He's won my battle for me. My restorer has won my battle for me my redeemer has won my battle for me i'm a winner man a winner man i'm a winner man a winner man let me tell you what is happening to these families that god is singling out i saw a cloud and the Bible says, if the cloud be full of rain, there is a strange visitation to bring testimonies. The power of God is still moving on those families. You're not shouting, you're not doing anything. Just this is the instruction God is giving me. It's impossible to stand if the hand of God is upon you in that family. Let captivity be turned around. 
It's a miracle service. God is bringing to end captivity. Opening the gates of heaven. Ah, it's coming to an end. It's coming to an end. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. It's coming to an end. Surely there is an end. It is coming to an end. It is coming to an end. Shame coming to an end. Reproach coming to an end. God of lifting has won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. The God of favor has won my battle for me. Number two, tonight's miracle service is very strange. I'm seeing a bunch of keys that is being handed over to people in the spirit. Now hear me. It is coming like fire on people's hands. I want you to bring them out. Key stands for access. There are people who have not been able to access certain dimensions. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring them out. Access. God is giving you access. Access to realms. Access to things. Access to treasures of your destiny. Among our viewers, the Lord is showing me someone you are following from the US. You are sitting on a couch, you and your children, girls, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are part of those that God is giving this access to. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I am praying for you right now as God is doing it here. Listen, without a key, even when there is a door, it will not open. By this key that God is giving, he's swinging open doors. I'm still praying again. The fire of God is still visiting people, opening doors by this key that he's given. Very strange manifestation of doors opening for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's very strange how God is operating tonight. I'm looking in a vision and this is what I'm seeing. Please listen. I'm seeing a woman who is pregnant and lying down like on a bed in a labor room, but she's not giving birth. I know this is a prophetic statement. There are some of you after nine months a woman should give birth but there are some of you spiritually financially pregnancy actually happened but now to give birth to the testimony something is stopping it i'm going to pray for you the power of god is coming on you it's time to give birth prophetically giving birth to dimensions of grace and i'm praying right now in the name of jesus everyone who is part of this vision i saw of this pregnant woman in the name of Jesus I stand as a prophetic midwife I command your prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery right now prophetic delivery right now by the spirit and the power of God prophetic delivery right now now please hear me people usually run 
when I pray for speed, but people are going to be running, but for a different reason now. It is not just for speed. I want you to be sensitive. It is not just for speed. It is still the same running, but the Spirit of God is speaking to me. Hallelujah. This running prophetically is a sign of deliverance. Leaving the place of pain into the place of of glory leaving the place of shame into the place of dignity i'm going to stretch my hands now the power of god will come on many people and they will start running hold them gently and just bring them out i decree and declare even as god has revealed to me i release that grace right now be separated right now be separated right now be separated right now be separated right now from any obstacle any condition Bring a pakoskatevata, bringing you shame and reproach. Be separated right now. Open your mouth and begin to declare in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare. I prophesy a separation by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. Who is Matilda? I'm hearing a name Matilda Matilda this should be a lady's name Matilda this is what I'm hearing I'm hearing a name Matilda please be sensitive we're going to pray Matilda the Lord is bringing a visitation to Matilda and her family who is victory I'm hearing the name victory not Victor victory ends with a Y, victory. In the name of Jesus Christ, there is a strange visitation that is coming for that person. Please, don't, don't just come out at random. Let's, let's be sure that victory. What's your name, my dear? Hallelujah. Now I'm going to pray for people, but I'm seeing a woman, a lady. You had a miscarriage last week. You had a miscarriage last week. Please help them. You had a miscarriage last week. I don't know where that person is, but I want to pray for you now. victory your victory I'm seeing oil being poured on two of you I'm going to pray for everybody but I'm seeing oil right now and the Lord is I'm with that oil I'm seeing something leaving your body this is what I'm seeing in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands over the victory that has come out by the power of the Holy Spirit. First two of you before I pray, I command right now, in the name of Jesus, by this oil and this mantle upon you, every demonic thing, every embargo sitting upon your destiny, I cast it out of you right now. 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 There is a lady, you had a miscarriage last week. This is what God is showing me. Please make sure you don't tell lies. We have a, a, a miscarriage last week. Who is that? What's your name? Miriam. Miriam. You had a miscarriage last week. You're married? How long? This year. This year. I'm going to pray for you. Who is miscarriage? How long? Last week. Last week. Where are you from? From Maraba. No, 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 no. Where are you from? State of origin. A those states. Do you believe in the power of God? Yes, sir. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! 
in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I'm seeing stones around fire. This is what I'm seeing. And the Lord is telling me to take it away. I declare every altar that is speaking against your life. As I'm praying for her, I'm praying for someone. In the name of Jesus, anything that will not let you go, I stand prophetically and I scatter it right now. I stand prophetically and I scatter it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help that lady, please. I decree and declare all who have had miscarriages according to the time of life. I prophesy to you right now. I don't care what the medical situation is. Return with your miracle children now. Return with your miracle children now. Who is Augustina? Augustina. I'm hearing a name Augustina. Augustina. God is bringing victory for that family. The family of Augustina. God is bringing victory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There is someone you have been building. This is more than seven years. I'm seeing a building and I'm seeing the number seven written on it. More than seven years it has not been completed. Whether it's an individual, whether it's a family. No matter what it is that you do, it looks like it is not completed. I want you to lift your hands. You don't have to come out. The power of God is coming upon you right now. It is the finisher's anointing. You will be surprised to see what happens. Some of you, before December, I'm standing and speaking. Every power sitting on these projects and will not allow you make progress. I decree and declare, go forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Huh. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm standing in front of a river. Please look, listen carefully. I'm standing in front of a river and this is what I'm seeing. You would think it's fish that is coming out of the river, but I'm seeing human beings tied with chains. You know how fish comes out and goes back. That's what I'm seeing. The Lord wants to set people free now. Please listen. I'm going to, it's a massive deliverance that is going to happen now. Please hear me. I'm seeing people like you know how you are in a river and it should be fish that come. You know how fishes jump, but I'm seeing human beings tied like fishes, but they are human beings. I'm praying right now. You're about to shout Jesus. My goodness, my God. Every marine spirit, spirits of darkness, Connected to the waters. It was an element of creation God gave for man's advantage. But has been manipulated by powers that be. In the name of Jesus. Anyone whose destiny has been buried. Kept down by orchestrations of evil spirits. As you shout the name Jesus. May that fire come upon you and I lose you. Are you ready now at the count of three? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. I lose you now. I lose you now. Covenants and altars tied to water. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now. I lose you now. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us.
us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for